So the Federalists, Hamilton, Madison, and Jay, wrote this series of papers for uh, the consumption of New Yorkers to encourage the ratification of the Constitution by New York. Now, these papers were organized. They were planned out. The Anti-Federalists started seeing these Federalist papers come out and they said, ooh, we should write something in response. We should be responding. We should be arguing to some extent against the ratification and certainly for alterations to what we are ratifying. Now, the Anti-Federalists were a much larger group. We're not as sure who wrote what. Um, they include people like Patrick Henry, right? He was the guy who famously said, give me liberty or, uh, or give me death, which is now um, the New Hampshire slogan, if I recall correctly. We also have people like James Monroe, who ended up the fifth president, uh, George Mason, who uh, contributed to the Virginia Declaration of Rights, and um, of course, Richard Henry Lee, who helped ultimately call um, for a Declaration of Independence in the Second Continental Congress. Now, this, like I said, was not a very organized group. They were responding to the Federalists, so they sort of by default got the name Anti-Federalist. As we'll see later this uh, semester, federalism actually refers to the system of government in which the powers are divided between the federal and state governments. So a national and a state government uh, divvy up power and responsibility. So federalism basically refers to this idea of states' rights, that states have power. Now, the Federalists actually were arguing for pretty strong national government. They were arguing in some ways against a federal system. So why did they take the name Federalist? Partially because they were arguing for federal government to have a lot of power, so it seemed like a natural name, but also it made people think of federalism and states' rights, which may have made them seem a little bit more popular among people who were hesitant to have a strong national government. It also made the anti-federalists seem like they were against a federal system, which worked out well for the federalists. The anti-federalists saw this and thought, well, we're, th th this is kind of strategically a bad name for us because we're arguing for more states' rights, not less. We don't want to be called the anti-federalists. So they proposed new names that, the, that they would be called the uh, anti-rats, right? They were anti-ratification. And that would make the Federalists the pro-rats, pro-ratification. And even back then, you didn't really want to be called a rat. So the pro-rats and the anti-rats. That clearly did not take off. We don't call them that at all. But it's kind of an early lesson in the power of naming things and the power that media can have. Now, these different arguments ultimately we're not going to stop the ratification. It, the uh, Constitution had already been ratified by enough states to become law. It was very unlikely that it was going to suddenly counteract uh, what the Federalists and others were saying that would get the Constitution ratified. But what they did ultimately do is argue for a Bill of Rights. And in Papers like the one, like Sentinel One, which was written, we think, by Samuel Bryan, but we're not 100% positive. He argued that a lack of a Bill of Rights in the Constitution and that the Constitution's supremacy over state constitutions was extremely dangerous and could ultimately lead to a tyrannical government, especially when we have a strong executive. Now, ultimately, as we know, the Anti-Federalists didn't get their way. The Constitution was ratified. New York did end up signing on and we're still governed by the Constitution today. But what they did get was one major concession from the Federalists. The Federalists agreed to, during the first Congress, draft a Bill of Rights. That's ultimately what happened. Madison did write a Bill of Rights and propose it during the first session of Congress and 10 amendments to the Constitution, what we call the Bill of Rights, were approved and ultimately ratified by the states. 
So the Anti-Federalists may not have gotten their way and argued against ratification, but they did get that Bill of Rights that they were so um, adamant be included.